Yeah, you didn't have sync up on the the other two. Fuck it, I'll figure it out. Oh jeez. Welcome back to show, everybody. Ugh. See you again. So oh, so we reformed him. Yay! We didn't. We didn't kill him. All those explosions were just, you know, uh, um, it, it it was um flammable paint. The uh the the moral of the story, kids, is you never know where you're gonna make friends. <laughs> Oh, no, God. wait, that was you. Give me that back. Yeah. What are you doing handing me the controller for? <laughs> it's mine. It's my planet switch. Brainwave, the third planet of the starry sky solar system. Is it bad? This you know, I'm a little disappointed by this game. Controlled by a single super but I'm still brain. jealous that you have a switch. <laughs> Big bro, why is everyone asleep? Hmm. I think yeah, you know what? I, I think I, think I like red. Planet. I like that he's just always pissed off. Yeah, he's the most emotive, honestly, out of all of them. Blue, blue's emotive in that he's usually tired. Because, like, Red is, Red is like, actually, like, moving around and emoting. Bomberman is the quintessential, oh, hero of the day. And then Green's just kind of, like, worried and Blue's... Sleeping. Green always looks worried. And yeah, Blue sleeps. That's what he does. If I just do this and then... Hmm. Yeah, that's that's some made up language. Why don't you do it? This is your field. Wait, Blue's a tech guy? But I'm sleepy. This is it. Just hack into it, you stupid. All right. Because it's just that easy, right? Just do this. Apparently, it is. Sure, why not? Bomberman's a certified hacker now. So you have arrived. What the hell is that? Welcome to my That's one of the bombers. He, he's, he's got the thing on his head. Easy okay. Do you see it? He's he's like a Dracula, like Phantom of the Opera type. Yeah. I actually really like that guy's design. Yeah, it's nice. I wanna I wanna fight him. Pretty. It's it's nice and and it still has like kind of a basic feel. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. So we've been red. We've been blue. We've been yellow. Oh, uh, we're not no, gonna we've do been white. Aqua. I don't think we've ever used blue. That's true. No, I, I use blue. I use blue to uh, come back and, and then beat level I one. I used green and white in multiplayer. Time for pink. All right, so you had uh, news. Yeah, um, way forward updated their Kickstarter or whatever with Half Genie Hero. And oh, I picked the releasing. wrong color. <laughs> I picked the wrong color for oh this world. Oh my god. <laughs> I think we just have really maybe, bad luck with maybe this. Maybe we should go back now instead of going through the whole thing with pink. Nope, confirmed. This is already hurting my eyes. Locked in. Oh god. You should have picked white for this. <laughs> I, I, I really think that at this point, we're just, we have really bad luck. Oh. You picked aqua for the world that had blue lights. We picked yellow for the, y yellow for the outer sunny area. We picked pink for <laughs> purple and pink We're cybernetics. Just, oh God, why? <laughs> and then we picked pink for the techie neon world. We didn't know what color it was gonna be. Pink isn't the color you think of for tech and neon. But yeah, uh, WayForward's apparently releasing some super difficult mode for Half Genie Hero that has like ball bustingly hard enemies and like all this other crap. I'm just waiting for risky DLC. As is Josh, as am I, because I want to do the game type where we get to play as a, a different character and where I get to make fun of Josh the entire time. Honestly, <laughs> I have to say, uh, I played through all the way of Half Genie Hero as like as soon as I got my code, I beat it. Same day, little disappointed. Really? I felt like, um, not not necessarily that I was gypped, because I did have a good time and it was fun. I'm just gonna keep playing as long as you're talking. Oh yeah. Okay. But Pirate's Curse left off, left off on a really good note with its story and characters, and I feel like Half Genie Hero kind of ripped me off of an actual sequel to Pirate's Curse. I don't think that's what it was supposed to be, though. It's that's a sequel to Risky's Revenge. No, it it is Risky's Revenge. It, yeah, it's 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 just Risky's Revenge with better and f more fun gameplay. It's a soft reboot. It's that's what weird. it is. Yeah, that's why I was so weirded out because I thought that this was going to be a sequel to Pirate's Curse, and I was looking forward to what they were gonna do with it, but then it just turned out to be Risky's Revenge 2.0. 
Which isn't a bad thing. No, because Risky's Revenge needed a hell of an update anyway. But yeah, you are, like, not the first person that I've heard that from. That's not, like, really like a bad thing, though. Like, if you went into it expecting, like, a plot sequel, mm. Because uh, yeah. to Pirates Curse, and that's not what they made. Then Half it's like, Genie well, Hero I'm dead again. <laughs> was kind of like a, a couple of random stories. Half Genie Hero then, was Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like when. Which is what you want out of like a soft reboot, right? If they're trying to attract more people to it. Especially because the gameplay is really tight and they've got. It's less Metroidvania and more mm -hmm. on like self contained levels. So it's, it's decidedly more casual in its approach. It's more of, of a of a like a actual level based platformer than mm -hmm. a Metroidvania. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I can't wait for Risky's DLC primarily because I'm hoping for like the same type of gameplay as Pirate's Curse with all her weapons and stuff. Yeah. Because that's what I really enjoyed about Pirate's Curse, aside from the story and the characters. The gameplay was tight. It was it a was really, so really solid freaking incredible. platform. That challenge at the end of it. Oh, This episode's gonna have a link back to Pirate's Curse. If anybody's following me and you still haven't watched my Pirate's Curse series, dude, stop depriving yourself. That game is amazing. If you haven't played Pirate's Curse and you're watching this, stop depriving yourself and go buy it. That's true, but if they, <laughs> if, if they don't want to buy it. No, I know, I just, <laughs> it's such a good game, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, oh, it, oh, oh. it was on my game of the year list for that year. I shouldn't have stayed alive through that. <laughs> I still can't believe how much stuff is just coming out this month, though. Like, as far as games go, it's nuts. I think the go. only I think the only company not releasing anything major is Microsoft. I I was waiting on the Switch. I don't really have my eyes on anything else in particular. Uh, I did find out that uh, the the remakes that they're doing in the Crash Bandicoot trilogy uh -huh. turns out it's a timed exclusive. So it will not be exclusive at some point. Uh, yeah, it, um, people are saying about a year because even uh, the the box art that they showed off it doesn't say only on PlayStation on it. So, cool. obviously, because Activision owns the property, they can do whatever the hell they want with it. Sony probably just paid them initially for the timed exclusive and as well as, like, the idea to bring Remember it back. Remember D-pad. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so who knows? Uh, the Crash Bandicoot trilogy could be coming to, say, Xbox One and the Switch. That'd be pretty which good. Which would be nice. I, I would absolutely never, love to play it on the go. I never played them. I, I never... Crash never looked like it would be my jam, but it's good if it's coming to something the, more portable. Uh, oh god! Yeah, these. Th this is this is bullshit. With these springs that launch you up, and you can't just fall mm -hmm. back off. That's garbage. Um. Yeah, I have uh two and three for the PS1. Those are the good ones. The first one had uh, a ton of challenge without the reward mm -hmm. from being challenging, so I didn't really like it. But apparently, they're fixing a lot of the bullshit that was in the first one, so, gotcha. like, who knows. Because, like, the first one you couldn't save unless you completed an, uh, a bonus level or, like, an entire world or something. Mm -hmm. And I think they're fixing that, because, like, in, this, in the second and third one, you could just go back to the warp room at any time and save. Saves in old platformers are definitely, you know, a valuable thing. Ooh, okay, mm -hmm. you've got the bouncy bomb. Whoa, what the hell is that? But you can't pick it up, that's unfortunate. I, this this water one, this was in generation two. Okay. It, um, it's a bouncy. I think if you kick it, it'll bounce off the wall, but more importantly, if you throw it, it will like, can boom I kick all it? over the place. You don't have kick or, or pick ooh, up. you just got a uh, pickup. You can go ahead and play the level if you, you want. You do have kick. Oh. Do you just walk into it? Oh, that's what it is. That's what the icon is. I misread it. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a foot kicking it. I thought it was like a flexing arm. Oh, uh, okay, fair so, enough. So yeah, that's what the bouncy ball. Well, I mean, does. it's so tiny on the bloody screen. How could you tell? You just don't have your glasses. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, you have the bouncy bomb and a kick now, so you can. There kick are many around. things on this earth that I can't afford. Glasses are one of them. <laughs> I am really happy that I've got myself a comfortable job where I can now start affording things. Oof. Like investments. I supremely need a job. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, the uh, the springy things, I don't like this shit. 
Is this? Oh, that's up there. Okay. Yeah. So, because like, you know what I don't like is when it's you're right next to a wall and then you're right next to an enemy. You can't maneuver shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, this world another great indicator of uh, a lot of unnecessary noisy garbage. Yep. Like, just look at a screenshot of this thing and try to tell me where I'm supposed to be looking. You know what it kind of reminds <laughs> me of? I don't know if you've ever played it. Have you played Shadow the Hedgehog? Mm -hmm. Reminds me of the uh, the computer, the computer world in that game. I don't remember that at all. It is so blinding that it's hard to really maneuver or see around anything, to be honest. You know, I really, d I think this world was just Pink's world. Because this, possible. this also sounds like kind of what the uppy in its sound, in its, in its mm -hmm. soundtrack. Oh God. Oh, so that's how you get down. That's weird. It'd be cool if they had like an arrow on them. Yeah, that would be nice. You know, just a little, little tap. Oh, Ooh, they eat that... them! Okay. Oh, so you can't fucking corner these guys! Well, <laughs> you can, you just have to, like, lay it in advance. I, I guess, yeah, you can't corner him. You have to get him oh, crap. on timing. You had well, space up top. I know. I feel really stupid for that, but at least I killed him. I only have one more enemy left. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I think he just goes down for a set amount of time. There you go. Where's the exit? Back down oh, there. It's back over there. No, no. Yep. Yeah. There you go. You gotta hit that thing. I feel so stupid sometimes. This was actually a decent level. This wasn't bad. Yeah. I think I like pink. Yeah, pink is cool. I don't. I don't like how uh, distracting the visuals are. But I mean the character. No, I know. <laughs> I, I'm just commenting on the level design. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice, once again, they've got a bunch of unnecessary direction shadows. It's coming in from the bottom and right. And you know what's even worse? Like, I know pink and blue, like this pink and blue, complementary colors. Um, you're no. already looking at bright pink. So the fact that all the breakable things are flashing bright blue at you really does a number on the Visual eyes. Visual noise. I am a game artist. Like, I'm, I'm an artist in a lot of different ways and like fields and uh contrast is a very important thing to get right because otherwise you end up with something that looks like this mm -hmm. where everything is just way too contrasty and there's no clear indication of where you're supposed to be looking at work right now for the past week it, it has been my job to do ui i've had to worry a lot about composition and where to direct eyes mm -hmm. and color and cleanliness is mm -hmm. a super important thing the UI on this game, super clean. Look at how little information it, it, it it's actually pointing out. Like it has an enemy icon, you've got a number, you got the world, you got your lives and your power-ups. Yeah, the UI is fine. It's really crisp, perfectly clean. It tells you everything you need to know without a bunch of unnecessary bullshit. Somebody from the UI department should have told that to the graphics department. <laughs> but then, but then like the art, the actual art itself. It's the backgrounds, yeah, the actually. Physical, the physical assets. The characters themselves aren't even all that bad, but it's the lighting and the environments they're put in. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that doesn't need to be here. See, and you know what really bothers me? Is Konami clearly didn't put a huge amount of effort into this. But if we don't buy it, Bomberman's doomed. <laughs> I don't like that holding a hostage. I don't either. Because Nintendo's been doing that to Paper Mario for years now. <laughs> Paper Mario's never not sold. <sighs> well, because well, now dead. it's like, oh, well, we went a different direction with Sticker Star, and oh, hey, it sold well, so people must like it. No. From what I hear, Sticker Star's not a bad game, dude. It's just different. It's grating. Like, right. I think I gave up like not even halfway through it because of how sporadic the difficulty curve was. Uh, okay, so this is a kill enemies one. That there's no point to fighting enemies in that game. That's unfortunate. To you put, don't get anything. To, to put in a song, although... All you get is coins, which are used to buy more stickers. Yeah. It, there's, there's nothing for you. But I think 
Paper Mario isn't their RPG series anymore. They have Mario and Luigi for that. Really which is which is their me. actual take on things. I get that, but at the same time, why couldn't we have both? Because one was a console RPG and the other was the handheld. It just doesn't make sense to me. Nintendo do what Nintendo do. We're going to head off to the next episode here, guys. Woo. This this series is going to be kept kind of in smaller installments. I just want these to be 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Aside Any from, longer I, than that would be overkill. Aside from the intro, because, you know, we were multiplayering and... Did she just have an idle animation on the microphone? I think that's just her hand. No, I saw her doing something. I just moved to reset it. Yeah. This episode will be over as soon as we find this. Are we're we gonna... Are we literally just gonna sit here and wait for that? Yeah! Yeah, there it is!